Good evening. This is CTV News from Monday, January 8th. I'm Denise Douglas. Thanks for watching. Well, topping our news tonight, the wintry mix tonight will make road conditions hazardous, so motorists need to be extra careful. CTV's Katira Jones is out in Largo with the details. That's right, Denise. The entire Washington metro region is under a winter weather advisory from now until 9 p.m. Now, we've been out here for just a few minutes, and I can already feel the accumulation coming down. Now, the wintry mix will bring freezing rain and sleet to the area, making streets and sidewalks hard to maneuver. Now, the school system decided to let students out two hours early so they can get home safely. And we spoke to some parents picking up their kids from Lake Arbor Elementary. Take a listen to what they had to say about the school system's decision. Girl, I was so glad because I don't drive in bad weather and I was so happy when they called and that automated recording said 1155. I said, praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. Yes, perfect. It's okay for a safety hazard and I understand, you know, but it's like people at work, people got jobs, you know, like it's kind of crazy, but it's okay. You think they should have made the call a lot earlier? When did a you get earlier? Mm -hmm. This was um, 10 o'clock. Okay. when I was at work, but okay. it's okay. <laughs> the State Highway Administration advises motorists to be careful driving on streets like these, but also on bridges, ramps, and overpasses. Reporting in Largo, Katera Jones, CTV News. Thank you, Katera. She also tells us that the school system closed Marlton and Pointer Ridge Elementary Schools today due to a lack of heat. The cleanup continues at several houses in Oxon Hill that were flooded when a WSSC water main ruptured on Sunday. This was the scene this morning as crews work to fix the busted pipe. For residents, it will likely take weeks to get their lives back together. Annalisa Yakut says her entire basement was flooded. Most of my stuff is in the basement. I don't keep a lot of stuff in the upstairs, so I keep all my stuff in the basement. So I lose a lot. All the stack room there, all my shoes, jacket, clothes of my kids, everything. WSSC put up some families at an area hotel and says it will work with residents in making the much needed repairs. In politics, Governor Larry Hogan says the status quo is no longer enough when it comes to the educational system across the state. He's introducing emergency legislation aimed at countering some of the problems facing school districts. He pointed out the problem with the lack of adequate heating in Baltimore school, city schools. In Prince George's, officials have been dealing with accusations of grade fixing. Governor Hogan says additional funding will be allocated for every district in the legislation that he's putting forth. In addition, an accountability in education office will be created. In fact, no child in the state of Maryland should ever have to suffer because of the failures of the responsible adult leaders who have repeatedly failed them over and over and over again. There seems to be a persistent and alarming lack of accountability in local education systems. This new office will be charged with investigating complaints of unethical, improper, illegal conduct on matters including procurement, education assets, graduation requirements, grading, education facilities, and budgets. It will impact individuals employed by the State Department of Education, by any county board of education, any appointed or elected members of a county board of education and any person or entity associated with the provision of products or services to the State Department of Education, any county uh, board of education, or any school. In a statement, gubernatorial candidate Ben Jellis responded to Hogan's announcement that $2.5 million in funding will go to Baltimore City Schools. Jellis says it is too little too late, adding that the money does not compare to the millions he has cut from that school system. There is good news on the crime front tonight in Prince George's County. Violent crime has fallen for the seventh year in a row. According to the police department, violent crime has been reduced by nearly 7 percent from 2016. The county experienced 80 homicides in 2017, which is 18 fewer than the previous year. The biggest impact appears to be over the past seven years. Officials say since 2010, violent crime has plummeted by 50 percent.
violent crime reduction to a couple of different things. Number one, it's not something we did in 2017 particularly, but we set out to take a different approach to the strategic allocation of resources several years ago. This is the continuing evolution of a different strategy in policing that incorporates property crime, violent crime, and fatal collisions, but also speaks about our role in the criminal justice system in preparing a good case for prosecution. Police say they're still trying to make inroads on thefts from auto crimes. Last summer,